Oh, good evening YouTube. So I wanted to show you some of the parameters here in the SBMS 120. So you can see right now we're at what 15.62 volts on the 4S battery. Uh, we've got a net discharge of 14 amps. We're still bringing in about 1.78 amps on the one solar panel. The one panel here is facing southwest and then I have one facing southeast that picks up the morning sun. But uh, Let's see, the cells are within, uh, let's see, it's these bottom two here, nine, looks like 917 and 902, so they're about 15 millivolts difference up here and we're pretty much not quite 100% state of charge. 4.0 4 would be full, so we're about 3.9. So that's one thing I've noticed is this display here, the state of charge, seems to stay at 100% until the voltage drops to uh, some value here, like below 3.9. Because I have, I'll show you later that I have the uh, over voltage reconnect at 3.9 volts per cell. So maybe that plays into that. Yeah, if I go over to my trimetric, it's showing 94%. But the interesting thing is, this morning, this one was reading 40 or 41%, and the trimetric was reading about 39 or 40%. So they were very close in uh, state of charge this morning. Just a while ago this afternoon, they were both at 100%, but as you can see, we're pulling current out and it's still at 100%. So I wanted to show you some of the parameters here. First thing I changed here was the cell type. I went to the lithium cobalt, which is the lithium ion setting. The default is number one, which is lithium iron phosphate. And then the other thing I had changed, I went from eight cells, which again is the default, down to four cells. And then I entered my battery capacity. Initially I had 135 amp hours and I've since added another 35 which brings me up to 170 and then what you need to do is you have to have the PV disconnected. You can see I just have PV1 as active and then you also have to have the load disconnected. Then you pull the balance cable out plug it back in so that it reboots and then it saves those or those settings are loaded in and before you do that you have to come down here and do the store parameters I'll show you here the advanced parameters that I changed so this kind of duplicates some of the same settings here you have lithium cobalt four cells 170 amp hours and as I mentioned, uh, Dacian sets this up on lithium ion, 4.00 volts per cell. So that was good. You have a delay. And then the over voltage recovery, this was 3.80, and I've bumped it up to 3.90. I might actually go a little bit higher than that, because one thing I notice is it'll charge up to essentially this 4 volts and then it shuts off until it gets below 3.9 volts or 3.8 volts and then you've got your under voltage let's go down here you can see there's all sorts of parameters you can go here there's under voltage over voltage you, you can set your overcurrent on charge so I guess that that takes care of your battery short circuit current so if, instead of having a circuit breaker I guess it's set up to actually specify the current you want so you could actually change that to a lower current you know there's no way I can hit 144 amps with two panels right now but you have all your currents short circuit currents and just wow just tons of parameters here and you can set the cell balancing parameters there. Uh, right here you can do cell balance on charge is set to 1 by default. And then there's cell balance on discharge is set to 0. But you can you could turn on cell balancing during discharge as well. And then you've got your temperature sensors. I haven't hooked up a temperature sensor yet. 
and lots of parameters there so you can store those parameters so we'll go over here to this automation and external I.O. This here is this connector, a little 16-pin connector, and you have all sorts of additional signals there. Uh, serial I.O., there's external switching signals, and, and this is where I set up my current shunt. Here's your external load. So I installed a 200 amp 75 millivolt shunt. So this controller is set up for a 75 millivolt shunt and you specify the current rating by inputting the milliohms that that uh, shunt would represent. So if you take the volts over the amps, so 0 0.075 volts divided by 200 and you end up with 0.375 milliohms and then you've got your external I.O. and so yeah I guess these you can set these external I.O.s up to turn on and off at various conditions so you can have it at a certain state of charge I haven't played with any of these here so someday I might get into that. Right now I'm just getting it working with the batteries and the solar panels that I have. And I figure I'll uh, work on the other stuff later. But those were basically the parameters I changed. So I went in here for the external shunt. And I happened to pick a 200 amp shunt because I figured that's about the maximum current. Like my AC power inverter, it's peak surge current is about 200 amps and if I go to a 24 volt inverter with 2000 watts it'll be about 200 amps so I've got two solar panels coming in here 270 watts each one on the southeast roof face and one on the southwest so one picks up the morning sun one picks up the afternoon sun and let's see we'll go back to monitoring but yeah that's the parameters I have set up so yeah, if you have any questions about those settings, uh, go ahead and post up in the comment section down below. And I'll put some of the other uh, videos over here on the left side. You might want to check those out. And as always, thanks for watching.